Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am going to be doing a nice little wig chat for you all because I know a lot of people come to me for advice when it comes to wigs. So I thought I'll just do a quick video and sort of explain a few things about wigs, especially for those who are beginners when it comes to wigs. I'm going to give you some pointers that I think are really sort of important for you buying a new wig. Things you need to consider and think about and I'll explain everything for you so you know what everything means and when you look and go to order you're not like, oh my god, what is all this stuff? then you can just digest it really easy so you know what to go for what to expect when it does come as well because i know it can be so overwhelming when it comes to wig wearing especially if you're new to it because you're like what are all these different terms like you don't know what to expect when you see a lot of different words and things so yeah i'll be explaining it all for you today so if you do want to see then please do keep watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well Okay, let's get started. So I'm gonna talk for you. I'm gonna talk through a few different pointers that I think are important and the, the questions I probably get asked most. And a lot of the time, it is sort of me asking sort of you what you would prefer, what you are wanting out of the wig. But we will come to that. I'm gonna explain everything first, and then we'll sort of conclude with that. So the first major thing, and probably the question I get asked the most, is cap construction. There's so many different types of cap constructions you can get with wigs. A lot of the companies I try, I always normally go for sort of full lace wigs, lace frontal wigs, rather than those wigs that are like a cap. <laughs> I tend to go for the more lace type of wigs. But I've got my wigs here to show you as well what the differences are so it's a bit easier to explain and show you what you can do with each. So I'm going to go through a few. Obviously I don't have every single cap construction that you can get but I'm going to show you a few and probably the main few that you can get and things to consider from this. So I'm going to start off with sort of a full wefted cap. So when it's a full wefted cap with no lace present then it's going to look something like this. So inside you'll see it's just a round cap all of the way through. This is the front part so you'll see that there's no sort of lace or anything across here. It's all just a block cap. These are the wefts at the back as you can see and that's the sort of hair through the little holes. These little holes will help to sort of get you some air in there. If it was all like this where it's just blocked then you probably won't get much air in on your head and it can be quite hot if it's like that all the way across. It was really important to look at the cap constructions when you're looking for a wig as well so you can see specifically what they do look like. At the back um, a lot of wigs you'll see will have little adjustable straps here which these ones do and most of them will. The thing to consider with these ones is that yes you can adjust them so you can make them tighter with your head um, make it fit more snug. Um, with these ones you probably can't do much in terms of hairstyling with it. With this front being blocked here um, it is very harsh on your skin so it's going to start. You're going to see where it starts and then it's all hair and then the rest is just obviously going to be your skin down. So you've got to sort of think about that and realise it's going to, you're going to well, you're not going to see it. it's going to look less realistic than a lace would. So just to sort of compare here, I've got lace on here with mine. So it looks a lot more realistic. Obviously, I've got these here, which is in the way, but you can see mine like graduates into my head. You can still see parts of my scalp, which you would with normal hair. But with these type of caps, you can't see any of your head or anything like that. It's just 
the wig start and that's what gives you a more wiggy look these are good if you just want to sort of pop one on and um, the more like fun styles things like that that's what i like to use these ones with and um, with them being less realistic so next i'm going to show you a frontal so this is a frontal wig you'll see it has lace from ear to ear and it'll go back like that which you can see there that's that part and then along the sides it just goes to about there the lace so this is a lace front that's the part you'll have the lace then on the back you've got this sort of wefted construction like you did with the other one so this is filled in it's not lace on the back here it won't be as realistic on the back than it will on the front again you'll be able to see the adjustable straps on here and little combs and things like that so with these combs i will actually quickly talk about them if you do have hair these are good and um, because it helps grip so it's not going to slide away they're good for that if you don't have hair that's fine you can just leave them if you find them uncomfortable ask the who you're buying them off to remove them that's completely fine they'll be able to do that but i just leave mine because i can't feel it things to consider with this cap is that with it not being lace on the back it's going to be like a harsh finish again so you ca probably can't tie a lace front one high in a ponytail or anything like that but you'll be able to sort of see the versatility on the front so if you've got lace right across the front here you can part it anywhere across here and it's just going to look like your scalp with my lace fronts i can do sort of half up half down so this is a lace front and i've obviously got a half up half down and that's because what you can do is like if you can feel any of the little wefts poking out just like pull this bit down a little bit just to cover it and plus my ponytail that's going over the top kind of covers anything that might be sticking out so not too bad you'll be able to see what i mean as well how realistic that looks because of that part and but then when you go onto the back you can see the wefts there so that's what you've got to consider with that final cap construction we have is a full lace there is other types of cap constructions you have but these are the main ones that i have and probably the main ones that people will sell so you'll get sort of an idea from my experience and sort of what i've learned from these caps this is a full lace cap construction all everywhere inside is full lace it's got a bit of residue glue so just ignore that everywhere is full lace even on the back part here so you can part anywhere you can tie it up in a high ponytail you've just got to make sure that you the back part sort of covered pull down little baby hairs just make it look realistic work with it to make it look realistic on that bottom part you will be able to get in a high ponytail i have a one from nuala and i can get it right high ponytail and it looks realistic i just have to pull some baby hairs down at the bottom so with a full lace it's probably your most realistic cap construction most versatile cap construction as well in terms of hairstyles um sort of tying it up things like that the only thing to consider at the minute with the pandemic is a lot of places won't be stocking full lace because a massive shortage of it so you won't be able to get hold of it unfortunately but a lace front is obviously a great alternative to that with lace front you can probably do low buns things like that low hairstyles but tying it back but high hairstyles you want a full lace they're they're the boyos for me they're my favorite cap construction definitely again obviously full lace all over you can part it anywhere right down the back there and it just looks like scalp because it's your head showing through if you do have some hair you can probably just wear like a wig cap something like that just to cover so it's even everywhere other things to consider that do come inside of the cap are bands so we've explained these little adjustable straps that'll tighten it all the way around the circumference we've got the clips which i've explained inside you can sometimes get these bands not every company do them depends on the company if they do these adjustable bands i would always recommend getting one though because if, especially if you don't have hair wigs caps can tend to be a bit baggy or big so you want these to be able to secure and just to have that ultimate security basically this one in particular um it does a come out so this one in particular you can take it out of the cap you can put it onto a different hook if you want or you can sew your own hook into there if you want this basically goes around the back of your head here that's how it ties and then you can adjust it as you like along here making it looser or tighter and it's got little silicone parts here as well to make it sort of 
stick and it's not going to go anywhere so i absolutely love these would always recommend to get one if you sort of want it nice and secure and when it comes to sort of sizing of caps i would definitely recommend asking the company you buy from for a size and chart they might have the standard small medium large extra large extra small things like that because it'll break down the measurements you'll be able to measure your head and that'll give you your most accurate sort of reading for it the thing with lace as well you've got to remember that with lace you've got to be really gentle with your wigs because when you're pulling on that hair it's tied to the lace when it comes out it's obviously not going to grow back so you've got to be really gentle when it's full lace it's probably not going to last as long a full lace unit so whenever there's lace involved it's probably not going to last as long because it can come out a lot easier than a really solid cap construction that's got the hairs full on engraved in <laughs> it's whether realistic is more for you um or if you want to sort of go for that more hard construction so it's gonna last longer but again for me personally i'd always go realistic and just be careful with it basically you can always get years out of your wigs as long as you look after them that's the main thing just look after them and you can get plenty of years out of them i would probably say two three years if you really really look after it because i've got a lot of wigs now that i just change in between it means i'm not like bashing one wig more than the other and sort of spreading the lifespan out of them all so it's good if you can have maybe two wigs mixed between them you're gonna get your years out of them that way thing to consider in terms of these different cap constructions is you don't have to wear glue you don't have to wear tape a lot of them i would recommend though I would say it just depends on each wig really. I would probably say depending on which company you go to as well, have a look who's got one, check with them. Do you wear glue? Would you recommend wearing glue? Would you recommend wearing tape? Things like that or can I go without? Majority of the time you can't go without if you've got a, a lace lace or something involved or sort of a lot of wigs aren't really glueless. The only wigs I'll wear without glue are my synthetic ones that have got a little bit of lace here just because the, I just pop them on and take them off but with my human hair full lace, lace front I always glue them down just for that ultimate security basically. When you get your wigs you'll be able to wear them without glue definitely straight away. The thing is when this comes is the lace goes over your ear so you've got to cut around for your ear holes and when you do that it makes this bit that like hangs down like your sideburn it makes that bit loose so it might flap up if the wind's whew, blowing in your face so just for that security and comfort just a little bit of tape underneath that would do and you can go with your day but for me i just like to glue it all the way around just for that security definitely obviously in my other videos i have talked about the different glues and stuff you can go for and um, go and check those out if you do want to see how i sort of apply them what glues i would recommend i have got a video on how to apply using a really strong glue and all of the tips in terms of that i've also got a video on how to do a daily glue so that's there as well if you want to go check that out another thing to consider is the lace so if you're going for a lace wig You've got you've got to get the lace to match your skin, otherwise, kaboom! Like there's no point in having it because you're gonna be able to see the lace straight away, and it's just it'll create like a line and it'll match your skin to a T. And I'm gonna explain the different types of laces you can get. So the vest at the top will have transparent lace. Transparent lace basically means it's clear. It's gonna match any skin tone that it goes on because it's basically a see-through lace, and it's whatever. You put it on to that'll sort of come through on it so transparent lace matches everybody's skin tone basically next we have translucent lace translucent lace is a it's meant to match everyone's skin but it's more preferred to darker skin tones it is it has that transparent aspect but it's virgin more towards the darker skin tones so I, I sort of describe it when I've tried it on me it has a slightly grey tone to it and um, I'm 
probably can just, if I'm really tan, get away with translucent lace, but it's not my preferred because at, at times I'm really pale. So it just depends how much fake tan I've got on. Then we have Caucasian Plex lace. Not every wig company, by the way, are going to sell all of these. It's just I know some wig companies do. So Caucasian Plex is kind of like transparent but for the paler version. So we've got transparent, translucent, Caucasian Plex. So Caucasian Plex is for whiter people. So like myself, I am white and therefore it matches my skin tone to a T. I absolutely love Caucasian Plex lace. It matches me perfectly and just, yeah. For me, it's almost as good as transparent. Then from there, what we do have is you sort of medium brown, dark brown lace. So you can get tinted laces that go for sort of darker skin tones. So you can get that medium brown, a light brown, dark brown obviously depends on the company and it goes up like that if you do have a darker skin tone then go for those ones they'll match really well to your skin them are all things to consider definitely like you want the lace to match that's the thing that's going to make it look really really realistic the next thing to consider is hair type you can get two different materials we've got synthetic and human hair I've talked about probably this quite a lot. I prefer human hair just because you can do a lot more with it in terms of styling. A lot of synthetics, you can add low heat to it, but it's low heat, so it's limited. With synthetics as well, they tend to come styled. So if you are someone who just wants to pop it on, synthetic's great for that because it's already in a style. You know how you like your hair, get a synthetic you like, pop it on, walk out the door, basically. Human hair though, you've got to sort of wash it. Obviously you've got to wash synthetic as well but you've got to wash human hair, dry it, straighten it however you like it and I like that because I can make it my own basically. don't really like to stick to one style and I like to sort of experiment it. And hair type as well. So with human hair you can get lots of different types of human hair. Obviously hair comes from donors and actual humans. It comes from all over the world from so many different types of people so you've got to consider the hair type on the websites of companies have a little look see what the hair type is it might be peruvian indian brazilian so just double check on there see what they say just have a google just say what is the texture of indian hair it'll come up it'll say it's silky it's dry it's slightly coarse things like that from there you can see how you need to care for it with the drier hair that's not a problem it just means you're gonna have to base sort of your your shampoo and conditioner and deep treatment things like that off the hair type so you're gonna have to concentrate a lot with the conditioning moisture oils things like that for the drier hair as opposed to overloading it on the softer hair naturally so that is something to consider and i think a lot of companies don't really explain or tell you that but it's definitely something to look for so you just know how to look after it before you buy it. question I do get a lot as well is what density you go for. This is always a question I ask people back, right, how thick do you like your hair? It always goes off thickness in terms of do you like your, your hair being nice and thick? Do you want it a bit thinner? Um, where it's a bit lighter just think of the heaviness the thickness managing it drying it things like that you've got to consider all of those things and it's just basically whatever you prefer i've got a wig my danielle wig from nuala which is 250 percent density but it's 28 inches long so the density sort of matches with the length i don't notice it being mega thick obviously i do when i go to dry it because it's takes ages to dry yeah that's something to consider i think this one that i've got on here is 150 so it's on the lighter side and i think it's probably perfect if you're unsure and you want to go middle of the road i would say 150 is fine for you you can go down to 130 i think that's the thinnest you can go 150 to 180 is probably average even above that i would say is thicker but i would go off the length as well depends how you like your wigs as well so just consider all of those things think of your preference considering all of those things what are you going to use the wig for when you're thinking about getting a wig are you wearing it every day is it for fun is are you wanting to tie it up are you a nurse where you have to have your hair back to consider your job things like that like go on a night out you're only wearing it at the odd time you want to wear it down only or you want to be able to do loads of different styles on it things like that just consider those things and what i would recommend is if you are someone who just wants to experiment with your colour, I would say go for a synthetic, check, try different colours, just because they're cheaper and you can work with synthetics to see which 
colour you're going to like before committing to a human hair because once you've got a human hair obviously the more expensive you want to put your money into something you're going to like. If you are someone who's going to have to tie it up then I would say definitely full lace is going to be a cap construction for you just because that's you're going to get the most realistic finish from it or you can always go for a frontal do low buns low hairstyles or tie it up and put like a you know one of those bands you can get that goes all the way around and just cover the back part so you can't see that but just put it across here so you can see the front so the front will look realistic it'll cover the back where it doesn't so there are my just things to consider just think like what are you using it for what is the main points or things that are important to you is it, it being realistic is it it tying it up or you're not that bothered about those things like all of those things are going to play into the wig that's going to suit you best and that will also direct you to which company or brand you want to go for obviously i've tried loads of different brands at this point and what i would recommend someone will base off what you're sort of using or wanting it for and then also obviously what you choose or what you get there's a price considered in that as well so it tends to be the better the wig the more expensive it is i always get the question can you recommend a wig that's really good but is cheap those two things unfortunately as much as i'd love to recommend somewhere just doesn't come into it i like quality and price correlate compromise if the budget doesn't or save up or go for a company that has a payment plan or something like that spread the cost treat your sale obviously sensible within your limits i know the nhs and it depends where you are from but the nhs can be quite limited in terms of what you can choose for your wigs um, and i know that can be really really hard i've been through it definitely i've struggled as well and i feel so fortunate right now to get some of the wigs that i do and be able to try them all to help you out as well and make the right decision but just to finish off this video i'd say final bits of advice is check in with real reviews real people who've tried the wigs any wig that i get obviously i get gifted some wigs i'm not paid anything to say anything i get a wig and i'm truthful with every single wig that i get at someone who has alopecia no way would i want to be recommended a wig that was rubbish like it's heartless if you've got alopecia and you rely on this wig to leave the house or anything like that no way would i recommend something that's rubbish like i'm gonna be 100 percent honest in my reviews always respectful of companies though but I'm, I will always be honest with them. If it's not the most realistic thing I've had, then I'm going to say that. Like, I'm not going to say, oh my god, it's amazing. I have to get it, like, so good. I'm going to list the good and the bad bits of all things so you know what to expect and what to consider. My experience when it comes to wigs, I want you to be able to not waste your money because it can be so expensive. I just want you to get something that's good, but also consider as well every person's experience can be different like i've been with companies who i absolutely love swear by some people haven't had that great of an experience and it just depends on your preference what you want and, and just trying to find that right one for you i know it's such a hard journey and sort of picking the right thing for you can be so hard especially when there's a lot of wigs companies out there they all look amazing and sometimes you only realize when you actually try it on which can be hard and that's the scary thing about buying online sometimes. I'd probably say the best wigs that I've had have been online. So it's obviously just taking that risk with your money. But just doing your research with them. Ask as many people as you see with one. Ask them what they had, what their experience was with it. Um, don't just go with one happy customer. But go off customer photos, real experiences. And then go from there. But yeah, that's my final words. I feel like I've blabbed enough now. But I hope you take something from that. I hope it helps you out in choosing the right wig for you. You can always obviously drop me a message. Pop any comments down below as well if you have any questions. I'll happily answer them there. But obviously I do a lot of 
reviews for different companies you can check out my reviews on there see which wigs I do love which I do like so just have a little look on there as well and there's also lots on my insta as well if you want to go and follow me this is my insta handle if you want to go and follow but yeah that is the end of the video thank you so much for watching if you still enjoy please do give it a thumbs up like I said leave your questions down below and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel but yeah thanks for watching I'll see you all next time